Hi, I'm Nathan, and I'm 26 years old. I'm one of those guys who wasn't born with a silver spoon. I had a very humble upbringing. People had fun in their childhood days, but it was only a dream for me as I had to work very hard alongside my single mother from age 11. Anna, my dearest mother, my superhero and support system. She worked tirelessly, ensuring I had a chance for a better future. She scraped together every penny to put me through high school. Thankfully, all was not for nothing. After wrestling through life for a few years, and with a partly funded scholarship, I got my BA with the Concentration on Human Resources from Arizona State University. Although I graduated, and yeah, with a fine grade, however, it was as though life was waiting outside the corridors of my graduation to give me a little feel of its wrath. I hoped to graduate and immediately get a high paying job and start repaying my amazing mother for all the years of labor and sacrifices. Alas, the wheels of my hopes were slowed down. I had to settle for the available local jobs I found, just to support my family. Throughout all these episodes, my ever inspired darling mother would always sit me down, or sometimes come into my room in our little rented apartment in LA, where we moved shortly after I graduated from college. I'm so proud of you. Despite everything, you're still standing. I love you. And I'll always love you. Sometimes tearfully, she'd share with me stories of some powerful and successful men who have lived. She'd often tell how they all received their fair share of life's painful whips. However, many of them that persevered have their names in the history books today as legends and models of success to imitate. More often than not, she's always taught me some morals and valuable lifelines. I remember she'd always repeat this statement every time, which has since melted on the tablets of my heart. Remember, always do good to people, even if they can't help you in return. Mom, what about situations where I'm out of money, or even when I'm stranded myself? How would I be able to help people? Sweetheart, value is beyond money. There are many people whose needs are far beyond what money can solve. Some people only need some emotional support. Some people only want to have warm, caring hands to hold them while they cross the stormy seas of life. So, my dear, there's always something to offer. Even if you have no money, never forget that. Thankfully, a few years later, about three years after graduating from college, I finally got my dream job. I was invited for an interview at a company I had applied to some time ago. The interview was awesome and I resumed the office within two weeks. This was a dream come true. I could eventually live a comfortable life with my mother. I got another apartment and moved in with my mom. It's a bigger apartment now. This was five to six months ago into my new job. Yeah, I was earning quite an interesting pay. Finally, life smiled at me and I smiled back. Fast forward to this day where I applied one of my mom's high prized insights as always and it threw me in a ditch, or so I thought. So this is what really happened. Just another regular day or so I thought trying to get out of bed and ready to get to work with my mojo and show everyone how much of a value-adding teammate I am. Only, everything that happened afterward was as though my day had been programmed for me, or it was being remote-controlled from another planet. As though the heavens were against me. First, I hit my leg so hard against the frame of the bed. Then my phone fell to the ground and got totally damaged. I opened the refrigerator to pick up my breakfast to microwave it, but then I discovered I forgot to put my food in the fridge, so my food got spoiled. Anyway, I decided to ignore all that. I picked my favorite blazer to wear after I showered, got dressed, and was on my way to the office. The office was just a stone's throw from where I lived, so I walked to the office every day and was never late. That was why I got the new apartment, to ensure I didn't have to spend so much on a cab daily. Well, today was different, because my eyes couldn't just bypass what I saw. Walking down to the office as usual, there was a woman by the road, dressed in rags and looking like she hadn't eaten for days. Actually, to be honest, the first thing that crossed my mind was that she was mentally deranged. I mean, how the heck would a normal person be dressed in those? I said to myself. However, I remember what my mom would have done if she was walking with me. Her teachings have done so much for me that I could hear her voice behind me when it comes to helping people. So, I decided to go closer to give her some money to buy food. Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, please don't call me that. I deserve no respect. I'm just a beggar trying to survive. 
No, everyone deserves some level of respect, regardless of their class or personality. You're such a nice young man. You speak so well and it makes me wonder why you're by the road, begging. Hmm, I'm Mia. The past few months have been really rough for me. First, my husband kicked me out of the house. Then I decided to rent a small apartment to stay. The weekend I moved in, I got robbed and molested by some notorious masked man. Everything I had was taken away. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's so hard. I wasn't able to contain the trauma. Everything happened so fast. I wasn't stable at my workplace anymore, and my boss decided it was best I stayed off for a while. The short form for that is, I lost my job. At this point, looking at my wristwatch and realizing I was getting really late for work, I could not just leave this woman helpless by the road. However, she wasn't done talking. She wanted to pour out her soul now that she finally got someone to pay attention to her. Um, I'm so sorry ma'am. I'm, let me just, so I got kicked out of my new place after I could no longer pay for the rent. There was no place to stay so I started sleeping close to trash cans. I'd also lost my phone and every other thing I had. So now the only way I survive is what I can get from anyone passing by. Please help me. This is indeed very sad. I have just a little here right now and I'll give it to you. Please get something to eat. I also want to plead that you wait for me at this spot. I will talk to my boss about you and see if you could be given a job. Even if it's an office attendant. Thank you so much, sir. This means a lot to me. What is your name, please? I'm Nathan. Nathan Williams. Uh, please, I'm running late. I will see you later. I took off running like a kid who was late for school. Upon my arrival at the office, every eye turned towards me like I was an intruder. Well, I greeted everyone still and moved on to my duty post. Shortly after assuming my seat, I received a call from Derek. He's a director of operations and I directly report to him, since I'm in the human resources and marketing department. My heart raced a bit faster because we usually don't have meetings in the morning, and we usually got a day's notice for our meeting with him. I tried to get a clue on what was wrong, but everyone now seemed to be minding their business as I walked through the corridors to his office. My legs joined my heart and were shaking uncontrollably as I walked to his office. I started talking to myself. What have you done, Nathan? It's barely seven months into this job and you're already being called up for some queries. Was it because I'm a little late today? But this is the first time. I've never been late to the office, my god. It was because of that woman. I tried to help her and I got myself in trouble. How do I go about this now? Still uncertain of what lies ahead of me in Derek's office. However, I knocked and I heard his cold voice. Come in. I walked in and even before I could say a word, he threw a white paper document at me, which I caught twice because it fell from my hands the first time. We want to thank you for your services so far with us. That letter is from the CEO. I'm sure you haven't met her before. Oh yeah, her recent chip was shortly before your interview about six months ago. Anyway, she decided to do a test to sieve off some unworthy employees, and you just happened to be caught in that snare. What? I'm sorry, Mr. Derek, but I don't really understand what's going on here. Please, could you uncover this mystery? You want it in clearer words? Okay, you're fired, Nathan. Please, you can enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. He pointed towards the door, which was already looking hazy to me. The grounds were no longer as I used to feel them. My legs were already sweating inside my shoes. This whole thing was strange, really, because how can just a single mistake lead to a sudden fatal verdict? Just after I was beginning to settle into a comfortable life and ready to ace my dreams, something is definitely wrong somewhere. Perhaps someone set me up. I was still in deep thought, trying to find words to apologize and rescue myself from this grave I had just gotten stuck in. So, I attempted to press further. Perhaps this could be salvaged. Mr. Derek, please, I, I need you to calm down and please hear me out first. Don't make me lose it, Nathan. This was not my decision. I'm also only executing the order given to me. I am really trying to keep my calm. Just get out of my office, clear your desk, and leave this premises before the next 30 minutes. Sir, please. This job is all I have left. Please, sir. Get out. What was more shocking is that I'd always executed all my tasks given to me with alacrity and dexterity. Derek has been one of the few people with whom I've become acquainted due to his jovial and amiable nature. 
In fact, he already took me as one of his favorites among the other human resource and social marketing personnel in the company. I'd always get him a gift every Friday. Although a cheap one, according to the size of my wallet, often I'd get a full pocket of marker, because we'll have a marketing review every Monday by 10 a.m., and he's going to need it to bring us up to date with the latest progress in the company. The CEO is not always on site, but I believe you shouldn't lay off someone you've not even gotten the chance to meet and test physically. Or Mr. Derek was making this all up and just made this decision on his own? I left his office to avoid the embarrassment and crazy scene it was becoming. Tell me this was all a dream and I would wake up to a beautiful reality, but I soon realized it wasn't when I saw the expression on my other teammates' faces. My entire world was crumbling before my very eyes. I was walking away and almost forgot I asked someone to wait for me. Her voice brought me back as she calmly called out, Nathan. I turned to her and could see the confusion in her eyes. This was the man who looked all bubbly this morning, but now looked devastated and bemused. I couldn't bring myself to look her in the eyes as I was drowning in shame. I had promised her a job and now I was jobless. Funny how life can be, right? At that moment, I felt I could be of help to someone. And at this moment, I needed every help I could get. I managed to lift my head up and then looked at her. I am so sorry, but I doubt if I can still get you a job. But... You won't be sleeping on the street anymore, at least. I have a room to spare. Thank you, Nathan. But you don't seem to be all right. What is wrong? You shouldn't bother. I'll be fine. Maybe I am not sane enough for you to talk to. Come on, don't say that. I don't see you in any way less important. I just can't put my emotions together right now. Right there, I broke down in tears as flashes of everything I had been through ran through my mind. I was again going back to where it all began, with all slates wiped clean, and only dust to behold. I needed to be strong because I was standing in front of someone who had gone through worse than I had, but somehow, I couldn't hold back the tears. My mom had made a trip to sell a property she had outside town, which she got from her dad. That was the last asset available for her, so she was not at home, but there was one more room in the house where Mia could stay although the smallest room, but still manageable for her. For about five minutes, I stood there and couldn't utter a word. All that flowed from my eyes was tears. All I want right now is someone to wake me up and tell me that I have been dreaming, but no one did. I had spent 20 minutes in that state and all she kept doing was patting my back. I looked at her and all I could say was thank you. Do you want to talk now? Do you feel better? Of course I feel better. What is wrong? I just got fired. What? Why? What happened? I was late for work. This is the very first time. I have never gone even a second late to work. Maybe everything is just against me today. You never know, Nath. It may just be your lucky day. Thank you for making me feel alright. We should get going now. My house is just down the next street. Oh, thank you so much, Nathan. That walk back home was the most amazing time of my life. Mia made me laugh in ways I have never laughed before. We spoke about a lot of things and I wished it had been even longer. We got to my door and then she told me she needed to go get some things and would be back. I wish I had followed her because she didn't come back. I stayed up waiting for her till late in the night but no one came knocking. I had thought she missed her way while trying to return. I was mad at myself for not following her. I'd have stayed by the road where she could see me and locate the house. I began to think about how stranded she'd be after all the promises I had made her, so it would mean I didn't fulfill any of them. When I couldn't wait any longer, I went off to sleep. My phone beeped a lot, but I wasn't interested in whatever it was. My life felt like a desert, like I was alone in the world. I decided not to inform mom because she would be more devastated. I woke up by 5 a.m., but when I realized again that I was now jobless, I sank back into bed. My phone kept beeping and I reluctantly picked it up this time and met the greatest shock of my life. It was an email alert from HR and it read, Congratulations, Nathan. Your salary has been doubled. Welcome back. The name of the company was my last job, so I knew where it was coming from. Wait, what? Was this another dream or was I becoming crazy? I ran to my bathroom and washed my face and came back to check again. The email was still there, but I still couldn't believe it. Quickly, I showered and dressed up and began running to the office. 
When I got to the spot where I had met Mia, I thought she would be there but couldn't find her there. But I was not going to miss a second chance again at my job. I planned to look for her when I got back. So I hurried and got to the office. The security guards greeted me in an unusual way. What was going on? The first person at the reception I met was Derek, smiling towards me in an overly friendly manner. I walked up to him and he first shook my hands and asked that I follow him. Wow, another heavenly dream. He walked past his office and I was all the more astounded. Where could we be going if not his office? We took the stairs up. There was only one room up there and only a selected few could go there. Yeah, you guessed correctly, it's the CEO's office. We got there and he opened the door. I saw the most magnificent sight in my entire life sitting pretty on an office desk. I bet my jaw dropped and my mouth stood agape. I went closer and I could tell she looked like Mia, the woman who was begging by the road less than 24 hours ago. But it definitely wasn't her. I mean, it can't be her, right? Because how? Her face moved from her computer to me as a broad smile spread through her face. Hi, Nathan. Nathan, here's Miss Mia Jonathan, the chief executive officer of this company. Derek was trying to introduce her to me or reintroduce her to me because, I mean, it was the same Mia I met yesterday. Now standing in front of me, all dressed up in a classic royal blue suit and wearing glowing hair brushed up with a fragrance that saturated the entire room. Her smile was charming and overall stamina was adorning. No, you can't be the same Mia I met yesterday. Yes, Nathan, it's me. And you're right to be surprised. This was all planned. I still couldn't believe it, but I just wanted to hear her speak. It turns out that she is the CEO. Wow. I was eager to hear the entire plot and how I became the main character inside it. Derek told me how diligent and industrious you've been in the last few months. Almost beat the records of your senior colleagues in the office within a short time. He also told me that you've been overly interested in the overall growth and excellence of the company. So we discussed that perhaps you are only doing this to win favor from him, or just the newbie energy that is burning within you. She's crazy about result-oriented and zealous employees, so she asked me to design a way to test you. You have to forgive me, Nathan. It's all on her. I tried to laugh with them, but I couldn't. As they both smiled at each other and Mia burst out louder. The way you addressed me yesterday and was ready to take me into your house... It was the most self-denying thing I've ever witnessed. You abase yourself to cater to someone you barely know. How? You were really going to take me into your house? Yes, well, thanks to the virtuous upbringing I received from my mom. I believe nobody is more special than another. We just happen to be a little ahead of ourselves. And like my mom would always say, always help people, even if they can't help you in return. Beautiful. Even at the expense of your job, you were ready to go all out for a stranger. Well, that's pretty impressive. I must give it to you, Nathan. I like your commitment to your principles and values. Keep it up. Thank you, Mia. I mean, Miss Mia. It's okay. You've got yourself your job back. And yeah, henceforth, just as you've read from the email, you're going to directly work with Derek as the Deputy Director of Operations. And while he's unavailable... You'll be in charge of the team. At this moment, I felt as if my tongue were going to fall out from the walls of my mouth, and my teeth hung apart within my lips. I became emotional at the instant, and I remembered again another thing my mom would teach me. I heard her voice reminding me gently. The best way to gain access to anybody's heart is to show yourself valuable and useful to them, and doing that with the purest conscience and not for what you'll receive from them. That, my boy is one of the access codes to greatness. Do you want to know? The benefits that came with my new office are mind-blowing. Not only will I not be walking to the office anymore, but I also have an estate to myself. I'm not finished. A 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross was waiting for me to drive it. While I was still within my thoughts, a hand touched my shoulders to bring me back to the present. So, Director Nathan, he said with a pleasing smile. I loved it. And I returned the smile to him and suddenly felt a crown worn on my head and a sword in my hands. That was one of the dreams I won't want to wake up from. Yes, Mr. Derek, thank you so much for this. And I'm sorry for doubting your intentions for me. 
You were doing me a great favor and setting me up for an amazing position. I never knew. I'm so honored. Come on, it's okay. You deserve it. Come on, let me show you to your new office. Yes, I love the sound of that. By now, we were already going out of the CEO's office. We went down again through the stairs, and two minutes later, I was shown into my new office. It was even bigger than my room at home. It turned out that everything my mom had taught me from my childhood still holds great value. So today, I'm giving my paycheck to life for dealing us a blow earlier. However, I'm equally thankful for the lessons it taught me. It was a journey that transformed me into what I have become today.